got a speech up my sleeve. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Chancellor Klein, President King, Dean Stibb, and Bedford. Excellent faculty. <laughs> Members of the board and corporation, family and friends, and, of course, fellow graduates. Where have you come from? And where are you going? The Lord asked this 4,000 years ago in the book of Genesis. And he asks us the same question every day. We all know what it's like to have a dream. And some of our dreams are general. I want to be successful, or I want to make a difference. And others are fairly specific. I mean, you can look at our graduates. Some are entering into the teaching profession. Others are interested in psychology, have a passion for science. And then there's Alan and me. We're entering the ministry. Everybody knows what it's like to have a dream. And anyone who's ever worked to make their dream a reality knows that somewhere along the line, obstacles will appear. It almost seems to be a universal law of humanity that no matter what you're doing, no matter how well you plan, inevitably, something will come up that threatens your dreams. When those obstacles appear, that's when the Lord asks the question, where have you come from and where are you going? When he asks this in the Bible, he was talking to a servant woman named Hagar who was being treated poorly by her master. Things got so difficult for her that she fled into the desert wilderness and she sulked. As she sat there, feeling discouraged and unsure, the Lord came to her and asked her, where have you come from and where are you going? Where have we come from? When I think back on the past three years of the theological program here at Bryn Athen College, two words come to mind. Obstacles. Insurmountable obstacles. But looking back, I see so much growth in myself, and I see growth, and it's not in spite of those obstacles, but it's because of the challenges that they presented. We all know that over the past half decade or so, our country has experienced financial hardships. Brynathen College has not been spared the effects of that recession. We've seen programs cut, jobs lost, and it's been a painful reality for many people. And when those tough decisions started to affect me and my program, I responded in much the same way as Hagar did to her situation. I fled into the desert and I wept. I became bitter and resentful. After many hard feelings and an angry monologue or two, Or three, <laughs> maybe 50, I lost count. <laughs> it hit me, something big hit me. I realized that maybe the biggest obstacle to my success was me. I saw that it wasn't about the obstacle that I was facing. There will always be obstacles. It was about my attitude in facing it. Adopting that perspective meant that I could finally hear the Lord asking me, where are you going? With a renewed focus on my goals, I began to see the obstacles as a, a chance to reflect on myself, where I had come from, and what dreams had carried me so far. With the clouds starting to disappear from my judgment, I resolved to move forward toward my goal regardless of what that path ended up looking like. <laughs> what obstacles have you faced? Maybe a financial crisis or the loss of a loved one. Maybe it's something more familiar 
like struggling with research or buckling under the weight of a minimum word count. <laughs> How about even being pushed to your limits by one of these guys? <laughs> when they knew that you had it in you to succeed. Not one of the men and women before you in cap and gown got to this point today without walking smack into an obstacle. But we're here today because in those times, we were able to reflect on the important things and to proceed with confidence toward our goals. Oh, and you might like to know, Hagar, she went on to become the mother of nations, but she didn't do that by staying in the desert. Where are you going? Maybe you don't know the specifics because, well, our story is just beginning. But there is one thing that we can count on. No matter what we do, no matter how well we plan, inevitably, something will come up that threatens our success. But so long as we have the presence of mind to take a step back and to ask, where am I going? We can put our faith and our goals at the forefront of our thinking. And then obstacles will only serve to sharpen our skills and to strengthen our purpose. And then when we look back and see how much we've grown, maybe in the future we can keep in mind that as one philosopher put it, the obstacles in the path are the path. Thank you.